BeastNet podcast, sponsored in part by James Safety Services, OCR Buddy, and supported by the fitness community. Here we discuss all things fitness related, running, rucking, mental health and preparedness, and of course, obstacle course racing. Welcome to the BeastNet. Hey everyone, it's Mike with BeastNet, and today I got with me Wendy. Wendy, um, let everyone know who you are. So I'm Wendy, um, I'm from South Carolina, and I have a married with four kids, ranging anywhere from 27 to 11, two boys, which are my bookends, and then girls in the middle. And um, I just love to stay active and, and live life to the fullest. Which is good. It's one thing I've noticed, because I've, I've got four kids. And they range from 27 to, oh wait, 26. 26, they'll be 27 next year, I think. But 26 to 19. I've noticed that as they get older, I have more time to be more fitness, if that makes sense. Because now all of a sudden it's not like you're 11 year old, you're probably still in sports and doing all that stuff. And my youngest being 19, all that stuff's behind me. Right, right. And I like it too now that they're older because they can join me in doing stuff. And and or athletic and then to sports. And so it helps them, but it also helps me to have a little friendly competition, you know, <laughs> which is fun. I know I did that. My, my youngest, he did, uh, what, three years in a row. He got uh, Spartan trifectas. Oh, nice. Um, this last two years, 19 and 20 or well, 20 and 21 are the first years in, that he did it obviously 20, cause there wasn't any races and 21 after a year of not doing anything. He just wasn't interested anymore. So, which unfortunately, you know, for me, but he didn't do it with me. I, I, which was funny because that's when I finally got healthy again. So I was for, you know, the listeners know, but you mean, I was 290 pounds before COVID. Um, And just, I used that time to, you know, I just started my exercise journey to finally get back into health and then COVID happened and it actually helped me where I had more time because I'm, I'm a safety professional in construction. So a lot of my t- teaching was just like this. And I, I would have, you know, a couple hours between classes and I would go run and I would, you know, like today I got home at, you know, two 30 in the afternoon and was able to just go, you know, jump on my treadmill because my knee's been bugging me. The treadmill's a lot easier on my knee, you know, and ran four miles and, you know, so it's, I finally got active again, but now all of a sudden he doesn't want to do it. And it's like, oh, I kind of, you know, but I had at least those three years where we got to do, you know, Spartans together. Right. And so many made by doing those races together, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a blast. So um, it, it is fun when you, the kids get to that age where you can do it with them and it gives you some competition. And now, you know, and I think part of the problem like this year, his worry is, which I've had a, with a lot of people now that I am healthier and I'm in better shape and I'm faster than I ever was. And they're like, well, you're faster than me. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm still, if I, if I start a race with you, I'm going with you. Uh, I'm not out there to, you know, to win and just whoop everyone's butt. I'm out there to, to, if I say, Hey, we are doing a race together. That means I'm starting with you and I'm finishing with you. If that means that, you know, it takes me twice as long as I normally would, whatever, you know, I'm here for you. So, and that's, I think that's what's his issue is now all of a sudden I'm in much better shape than I was. And he's like, Oh, I can never keep up with you. Oh, no. it's one I love so I race competitively sometimes but then like this weekend we're doing the Carolina Spartan and going out for the beast on Saturday with both of my daughters and a friend that's doing her first beat and I'm like you I could probably go faster but being there with them I don't care if it takes us all day one team one fight we're going to get through the whole thing so and that's the way it should be and I mean it's so much more fun that way I have done the competitive Um, this year was the first year I tried competitive and I did a couple of competitive races and it's a completely different vibe, right? You're pushing yourself. You're making sure you hit the obstacles. You're doing everything. You're not helping people. You're just going, going. The only thing in your brain is I need to get to the finish line as fast as I can, which is so different than like I was before where I always ran with the team and it was always, we get to the finish line, you know, and it's just a completely different mindset to do the competitive. It's nice though, to push myself. I like to push myself, but it's not something I could see doing every race. Yeah. I do like, you said it's totally different vibe. When you go out there open with friends, I feel it's just fun. I'm like a kid on a playground. We're all laughing and joking. You race competitive and it's like, boom, 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 focus, get it done. Yeah. Yeah. 
it, it is a different vibe. And I've done a couple where I did um, Washougal this year, in, which is Portland. Um, I did that one where I ran competitive. And then as soon as I finished, I, and it was a sprint, I jumped at, you know, finish and basically gave all my stuff to a friend and then jumped back into the starting to go with Dawn and another friend. So I ended up doing the, the, the competitive and then had the fun race after. So that was kind of fun. Yeah. Those are always yeah, nice. Yeah. So, so that's fun too. Where I got, you know, I got the both vibes, you know, where I did the, you know, the sprint, um, didn't hit my goal on time, but I, I still, I hit my goal where I wanted to be in the pack of people. Um, but, and then, you know, right after that, I got the great high of jumping in with friends and having that whole, you know, the team camaraderie. So it's definitely different, different vibes, but there's ways to make it all work. So. You're exactly right. Yeah. So how is it, you know, I mean, like you said, you're, we're both a little bit, you know, our kids are older, but I mean, that was always the hardest part for me is as a younger parent, finding that time to be active and everything else. And that's where I made mistakes. I didn't find the time for that. I didn't do it. And like I said, I hit 290 pounds at one point, which was way too big for me, you know? And now I'm, I'm about 220, 225 right now, which I still feels a little big. I hit 180 at one point, but even my boss was like, are you sick? <laughs> like, no, I'm actually healthy, leave me alone. But I, and I tried, I, I went the wrong way and gained a little bit more back than I wanted to. But, but that was the hard part with kids when they were younger is finding the time. And I know Dawn right now is running into that problem because, you know, Dawn has a, you know, I think she just turned six months old um, baby that he's in the process of trying to adopt. So his entire like world of being able to exercise has been turned upside down. So, right. You know, what kind of things did, did you find when you had that when you were younger? Well, when they were younger, it was really hard. You know, my oldest is 11 years older than the second, but the second, third, and fourth, boom, boom. So, so many times it was hard finding that time because you're sleep deprived. When they're little, they just need you there all the time to take care of them. Many times I would take, you know, when they were babies and I would put them up and down or I would do squats while I'm holding them, but I was never consistent. And I actually was exercising kind of lost who I was and went through a very very st bad state of depression about 15 years ago we live literally in the middle of nowhere <laughs> you know you you can't see a neighbor's house from where we live I was away from family and I just I needed an outlet because I was home all the time with kids and never got a break and my oldest son, we were looking through a photo album one time and he's, he didn't say it with any mean intent, but he just made the comment, you don't seem as happy as you used to be. And it hit me like I had, I really was struggling with sleep deprivation, little at nurse and just constant. And so um, I would ask my husband, can I just please get two nights a week to go walk for 30 minutes? So I got in that routine of just give me a break from the kids and let me go walk for 30 minutes. And those 30 minutes would, there'd be many times I would cry. I would pray. I would just, but I would come back feeling refreshed mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, he saw that I was feeling better. And then from those 30 minute walks to, I saw they were having a exercise class, women's exercise class in town. And I thought, even if I have to take these kids with me, I will put toys on the floor that they can play with, but I've got to get some type of exercise in. So did that. And I just, I just started feeling so much better. That, that's amazing. That, that's the hardest part. I mean, that was the hardest part I found was trying to, you know, find ways around it, you know, and I didn't have like, you know, I worked and then came home. And I mean, my wife was, you know, took care of the kids because it just financially and everything else, it worked better that way. But it was, tough because even then now once you get home from work you're tired you know you know she's tired from taking care of the kids and stuff like that and neither one of us want to do anything and, and that was the hardest part but once they got older it was I found that and I found a couple of different times where running was my outlet I'd go run it was my time to clear my brain get everything going but then an injury would take me out and then I would let that injury become my excuse and then okay, well, I'm injured, so I might as well sit on the, and this is, I say this all the time, I, I'm injured, so I might as well just sit on the you know, couch and eat potato chips. And that's where all of a sudden, you know, I'd make the mistake of, you know, 
where I see it now, where it should have been more, I'm injured. How can I continue my exercise journey without, re, you know, while, you know, nursing this injury? And that's the way I should have looked at it rather than, oh, here's my excuse. Right. And it's so to give into those excuses. You know, I'm tired. I've got a lot going on. I'm injured. And you think, okay, I'm just not going to do it today. And that one day adds to two days, two days adds to three days, you know. Yep. And I think I was just fighting that mental game of, for me, I have to think on even, you know, even though I love being active, there's still days like now with the cold weather, I really don't want to get out when it's 30 degrees and go run. <laughs> I would rather stay inside where it's warm, but I have to tell myself, Wendy, when you get done, you'll be warmed up, but you're going to feel better and it's going to make your day go so smooth if you don't do it you're going to regret it you're not going to feel you know so a lot of times it's just that mental game of it's a mental game for me it's one of those a friend challenged me to uh, a run streak you know how far how long can i go without you know run how long can i go running at least one mile a day and later this month i think actually in like four days from the day we're recording this i hit 500 days so what? So I'll be at 500 days of continuous, like every day, at least one mile a day, you know, and some days it is, it's literally, I go jump on the treadmill, run a mile and it's a day's my mile, but it's done, you know? And then I have the other goal where I do a hundred miles every month that I've hit. This will be, I'm 14 miles away from 19, the 19th month in a row of a hundred miles every month. So, which for me, like I said, I was a big guy and I, I, there's no way I could have done this two years ago, but now I'm finally, you know, into that where my body's getting into the shape, I can do it, but you run into injuries. Like you said, you know, like I was saying earlier and you have to figure it out. Like right now I do, cause I did the Dallas ultra and awesome. Spartan Dallas ultra. And then two weeks later, I did a challenge with a friend that was 30 miles with workouts every mile and 11 and a half hours on that one. And well, eight and a half hours, sorry. And my knee is just angry. It's like, no, you need to slow down. So it's like, okay, so I've been moving to the treadmill because I can do the treadmill and it's a lot less pounding on my knee to give my knee a chance to heal. So it's learning those, how to keep moving and work around the injury and work with the injury, not make it worse. So Right, no. right. Yeah. yeah, and stretching. That's a down. Don't stretch enough. Yeah, I know I don't stretch enough, but, and especially, I mean, not sound bad when you start getting up to the above 40, it starts becoming more important. So, you know, I I'm 43. So I, it's at that point that I need to really pay attention to the stretching and my body. Cause at this point I'm not going to re I'm not going to recover like I did 20 years ago. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm 44 and that's something I have to tell myself, like I'm in this for the long haul, yep. you know, it's a phase. I know when I started this, I started Spartan races. 2016 and some people kind of thought it was a phase but I've just all in because it's been a life-changing experience for me um but now that I think about it you know even though I like to go hard and be competitive I also want to say you know when I'm 80 I still want to be active I may not be doing Spartan races active but I want to get out and hike with grandchildren or play ball in the yard or you know so I'm uh, I'm getting older to think about that and treat my body well and try to stretch. <laughs> I'm not always the best with it, but um, yeah, I want my engine to last for a long time and not yeah. give out. You could still do Spartan races at 80. What was that? What's the name? Paula Chance, I think is his name. Just did 80, AR8, eight, eight trifectas at 80. Right. So yeah. I met him uh, in Montana and then I, I, I ran into two guys that ran with him, Tom and the other is it, I can't remember the other gentleman's name uh, in um, Dallas. Got Tom and I can't think of his name right now. They always run together, but yes. Mm -hmm. And I saw them in Dallas. I mean, I ran into them all year long because I did, I did four trifectas this year. So, no. and, but it's one of those things I've told a lot of people, this is probably the last year I'm going to do that many because I'm just, I, I'm kind of looking at triathlons more now. So I'm still going to do Spartans, just not in the, I mean, I've done 56 in my lifetime. I started in 2015 and it's just, I'm kind of burnt out and I want to try something different. So I still want to do them, but not at that level. So I think I'm going to start looking at Ironmans and triathlons a little more. 
for a new that, job. Yeah, that's really cool. So, which I mean, that's another thing I was going to ask you. What keeps you? I mean, yeah, I know you love the Spartan races, but what else? I mean, I mean, Spartan is one piece of a lot of it, but a lot of people use these Spartans. Like, it's kind of what for most of us got us into it. And then we kind of, you know, end up doing other things along with it. So like for me, it's Spartan was my big one, but I also do Rise events, which is a local one over here in uh, Bend, Oregon and some other ones. I mean, what, what other things do you, keeps you moving and going? So I, I like the heart races because it, you, you know, you're running, but then you also have the strength part of the heavy carries, the strength part of pulling your body weight out. Um, this year I ventured out and I did other obstacle course races, the Bone Frog, Savage, Pilger Bat, which is a um, smaller one, but it's actually on the beach um, in Florida, Daytona. Yeah, I think Dawn actually had an interview and talked to the guy who set that up. I think. I think he did. Um, I should know that, but I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> so um, Aaron and Dan were two that put that together. Yeah, I don't know I if they think Dawn did. I'm not sure if he did. I think he talked to him. I think he was working on talking to him, but. I know we, we've had some things where we've talked to them because it's one that I looked at and I was thinking about it, but being over here in Washington, it's a lot harder to get to the East coast right now um, for now. But um, some people know this, some don't, there's a good chance that by this time next year, I'll be in the process of moving farther East, but. Nice. Well, good. To the middle, the middle of the country anyway. So Texas. But. Very good. Very. So I, I still love the obstacle course racing just because it just mm -hmm. you know, the woods. Through, it makes me feel like a kid when I used to play in the woods when I was younger. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, I like having a mixture of being able to run and then also having the strength for carries and, and rigs. Um, I had thought about a triathlon at one time. I'm not a very good swimmer. You know, I was one of those, I never took swim lessons growing up. They just put you in the pool and you learned how to yep. <laughs> sink or So we actually put a pool in here at our house um, two years ago. And so I tried to do laps back and forth um, just to build up that confidence in swimming. But maybe I'll do that one day, you know. It's an, it's an interesting thing. I've done a couple. Um, I actually DNF'd um, the Ironman here in Washington. Um, because I didn't train enough on the swim. I, I, I'm the same way. I was never took swim lessons. I pretty much, it was, I got thrown in the water and sink or swim, figure it out. So I did take a few lessons right beforehand from a really close, good friend um, who helped me get to a point that I was a lot better than I was, but I wasn't where I should have been. And I went for it anyway. And it took me too long in the water. Um, I had issues where I wasn't able to acclimate to the water and it was cold. And so when I hit the water, it immediately took my breath away and I couldn't catch my breath. So I did basically the mile and 1.2 miles, basically having a, an anxiety and asthma attack at the same time. So I made it, but nobody knows if I finished in time or not, because I lost my timing chip in the water. Oh, no. So I hopped on the bike and went, but uh, by the time I got done with the bike, it took me too long to catch my breath. Even on the bike, I still was having issues breathing on the bike. And by the time I came back in, I was 19 minutes past the cutoff. So I missed, I couldn't even start the run. So it was, it was a lack of, I, I, I was farther than I was, but I wasn't close enough yet. So this next year I'm doing, I'm going for it again, but I'm going to do a couple of triathlons beforehand to really try and make sure I'm at that level that I need to be and get my training to where it is. It's a whole nother challenge. And that was kind of it. When I started Spartan, I wanted that challenge. And now after 50 something races, I'm like, I still enjoy them, but I want a new challenge. You know, right. I like the heavy lifting. I like that, but I've been doing enough of the local ones. And I hate to say this, like I said, I love Spartan, but it's become cookie cutter. You know, it's whether I do a race here in Seattle or I do the one in Dallas, it's the exact same obstacles, just different location, you know? Right. And I mean, it's the same thing with a triathlon, but I mean, it's different challenges, but I've done some of the local races. Like I said, the rise ones down in Bend, completely different obstacles that I've never even heard of, never even thought of different challenges that were just amazing. You know, one of the events they have, you're shooting guns. So, oh. I mean, it's, yeah. So shooting guns with obstacles, obstacle course race afterwards. And I mean, it's, there's a lot of different things. So it's like, I'm, I'm liking the new challenges of some other stuff. So I'm going to continue to do the Spartans, but I think a little less. 
Yeah. Right. And that, you know, Spartans, you kind of know what the obstacles are, you used to them. And I ventured out to other OCR series races where you have different obstacles that are a little more challenging than, you know. And that's where we run into the problem. You're on the, you're on the East coast. You, you have the kind of the pick where over here we get Spartan and local races. Tough motor come shows up here once a year. They, they're actually like, next year. They're actually having, I think they're twice, but other than that, we got tough motor like once a year, Spartan and local races. That was it. We don't get savage. We don't get bone frog. We don't get Epic. None of those coming. None of those come to the West coast. So why? But, I don't, I don't know why. I think it's just because they, they, I think, I think a lot of it is, is over here on the West coast. It's a lot farther between venues. Like on the East coast, you can kind of like hit different things. We're here on the West coast. It's pretty much like you have Portland, Seattle, and California. Now, and some stuff in between, but it's like, and I don't know why there's, but yeah, I know like Green Beret tried coming out here, but could not get enough, you know, interest to really make it worth their while so they canceled um there's been a couple other ones that have tried to come out here and just couldn't get the interest and part of the problem you run into everyone around here they'll sign up at the last minute so oh, no. a lot of companies will will start to get one set up and then there's not enough sign up so and with like a month or two out they're like yeah we're, we're out we can't do it because what will happen is is if you see it is like a lot of them nobody will sign up and then all of a sudden the last two weeks they just flood it so, and people are afraid to wait for those last two weeks. So we've had a couple, a lot of them that have had races planned up here and then they've canceled because there was just wasn't enough people signing up. Oh man. Wow. Well, maybe once you move to Texas, they have a good many races. You can. <laughs> they do. Uh, I've been looking at it and that's one thing that was, you know, I was looking at, um, even this year, I'm going to fly down to Texas so we can look at a few places and do some things while we're down there. And I'm going to do my entire trifecta in, in Texas. So I'm doing San Antonio, I think in March, and then probably go back and do Dallas again. Nice. October or whenever. So yeah. Like what you hear? Make sure and subscribe and review us on your favorite podcast platform. Be sure to find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you're using YouTube, please click the little red subscribe icon, then click the little bell for notifications of future episodes. And if you could, give us a thumbs up. So what other things do you do to keep yourself going? I mean, with four kids, I mean, that's the, that's the hard part. Like I said, is, the, is for me, it was the four kids trying to figure out how to do it. Because a lot of times, like I said, you have their sports, you know, especially when they're that age, you know, that those teenage years. You know, right. they go, you got their sports and everything else that you got to figure out. I have a friend that basically she takes her kids to it and then runs the track while the kids, you know, practice or and stuff like that. And there's been many times. So they all just finished up. Our 11 year old just finished his football. Um, the 14 year old had tennis and she cheered at the varsity games on Friday nights. And then the 16 year old had volleyball and it was just many nights. They all three had practices or matches or games, and it was just you go here or there, and you do the best you can. Um, I just completed, I'm not sure if you heard of 75 Hard. Have you heard yeah. of that? Yep. Um, it's 75 days where you have these strict criteria you go by. If you miss one thing, you've got to start back at day one. And after you do 75 days, you can stop there, or you can go into phase one, phase two, and phase three, and it completes one year of Live Hard. So I, I completed that back in August, but um, when I was doing that, there were many nights after matches or games, it would be 11 o'clock and I was walking laps in our backyard around our swimming pool just to get in a 45 minute workout. You know, it's one of those things, if you really want something bad enough, you're going to find a way to do it and you're going to make for it. So even being busy with the kids here at home, you just have to find, you know, how bad do I want this, you know, and, and it was those late nights at 11 o'clock, no matter the weather, um, when I'm walking around the pool, uh, you know, <laughs> making laps around and around, it makes you just have that mental strength of like, you know what, I could be in bed right now, everybody's in bed right now, but I'm out here and I'm putting in this time and I'm putting in this work and it's just that game changer of build, building fortitude, um, of getting the job done, you know? 
And that's awesome. And, that, and that's one of the hard things that, you know, I think a lot of people don't think about. It's just that, you know, everyone's like, oh, I wish I had your willpower. It's like really not my willpower. It's like I put a goal in front of me and I just had to make that decision that I'm going to do what I have to to hit that goal. It's like, you know, with the run one mile, you know, a day, everyone's like, oh, one mile. How hard is that? It's like you'd be surprised on some of the things like when I drive all over the state and teach. And sometimes I don't get home until 10 o'clock at night. Right. So then all of a sudden, you know, I'm I, at 10 o'clock at night, I'm going and running a mile on the treadmill. And then, you know, whatever, uh, when we did the traveling down to Texas, I, it's like all of a sudden, you know, I've got, you know, I'm at the hotel, but I've got to run down to the, the treadmill down there and run a mile so I can get it done, you know, because we've been traveling all day. And, you know, there was a lot of that where it was just, you know, trying to find time to do it. Plus, I also told myself that along with that mile, because I have a Fitbit, that I would do 11,000 steps every single day. And I think I'm on day like 320 where I get 11,000 steps. And it's like some days, all of a sudden, I'll look at my watch and it's, you know, 10 o'clock and I've got my mile in, but a mile isn't even close to 11,000 steps. So I've got my mile, but I only have like 8,000 steps. And all of a sudden, I'm running laps in my living room, basically trying to get those steps in. And that, I mean, it's, it's how much do you want to get, how much do you want to hit your goal? You know, right now I'm looking at right now, I'm trying to figure out in my head. I promised myself I'd do 15,000 miles this year or 15, yeah, 1,500 miles, not 15,000. 15,000 is way too many, 1,500. Um, and I'm 220 miles short at the moment. So I've got to pretty much decide, do I want to jump up to doing five miles every day to make sure I hit that 1,500 or do I want to fall short? So you can guess I ran five miles today. So um and I think that separates so many people. You know, once you you put a goal out there for yourself and you hold yourself accountable and you have that integrity of, you know what, it's 10 o'clock at night. I still have 2,000 more steps to get in, but I'm going to get it in. You know, I just, I admire that because it's so easy to say, you know, I've had a long day. I've been stressed with work. The kids are driving me crazy. I'm just going on to bed. And that's such the easy way out. It is. But wake up the next morning you think oh my gosh it would have only taken 30 minutes and I could have gotten those 2,000 you know yep. so I tell you that you're like you know what I'll up it to five miles a day if I have to yeah and that's one thing you know like with yours where you're talking about you know you're out there doing laps around the pool it's like it could have been easier if you just go you know I'll start I'll start again tomorrow right it's only 75 days you know I, I'm you know and a lot of people oh, I'm only I'm I'm 30 days in I can start over it's no big deal but why, you know, why not just go out there and do that 45 minutes around the pool? You know, why not do this? You know, it, once you get that in your brain, like for me, if I don't run a mile or run every day, I feel like something's wrong. Like something's missing. Yeah. yeah. And that it, you just got to get that in your brain where you just get yourself trained that this is what I need to do to stay healthy. And I get all these people all the time ask me, how did you get to where you're at? And how are you maintaining it? I'm like, well, I gained back more than I wanted, but I'm still not at the 290, I'm still, you know, 220, 225, which is healthy for me. And everyone's like, how do you do it? And I'm like, it's the answer you don't want. It's diet and exercise. It, there's, right. no, there's no pill that I can take that's going to give me this. It's diet, exercise, commitment, and consistency. And pushing through the hard stuff. Yes. Late nights that, and I think that is just the biggest game changer right there. And it's, you know, once you work that mental muscle and push through when you really don't want to, or you really don't feel like it, but you just are putting from another, then you do it and you're like, oh, wow, it wasn't so bad. Um, I heard David Goggins, I'm not sure if you listened to him, but um, about training for life. And he says, you know, when you're out there doing those workouts or you're having to, run in the rain he said you know so many people say oh it's going to be raining in the morning i'm not going to run oh it's going to be cold i'm not going to run he said no whether it's raining with whatever the temperature is you go because it's not going to always be 70 and sunny in life no. you try and so i find sometimes those very late night workouts or the days where i go and run and it's raining and it's cold i tell myself wendy this is making you stronger mentally physically emotionally so when something in life happens you've already developed 
that strength you need to help push the hard stuff. Yeah. And I see that a lot with people who do the Spartan races and runners a lot because they get to that point where it's like they learn not to let an obstacle stop them. It's more of how do I get over through or past this obstacle? You know, not how do I get, you know, how do I, okay, well, it stopped me. No, no obstacle stops you. Just keep going. And that was kind of thing when I, I first started the weight loss journey this time, one of the things I kept saying, and I kept posting is no excuses, no excuses this time, you know, cause every time I had an excuse on why I stopped and I'm like, yeah. no excuses, you know, and then all of a sudden COVID happened. I'm like, there's the best excuse I have. I, I COVID, I can't leave the house. No, I can leave the house. I can go to the park across the street cause I'm still outside no excuses, keep going. And that was kind of, that was the hardest one. It's just to remember and just keep telling myself that was my, my mantra, no excuses. Because if you think about it, we really have no excuses. And I think about so many times people in the Spartan course or, you know, other races with more heart than scars or oh, the yeah, wounded, them. They, they get out there and they may have an amputee or they may be, able to be in a wheelchair. They have every excuse in the world they can use. Mm -hmm. but they still get out there and do the best they can. And that always just inspires me, you know, and I just want to tell others like you, you have all of your limbs. You get, what is your excuse of not doing anything? You know, there's so many times because I feel so good being active and eating healthy and living a good lifestyle. I see people and I just want to go up to them and say, you can feel better. Just <laughs> It's just a matter of the, you know, getting out there and doing it. I mean, it's, we were not made to be sedentary. We were not made to sit in a chair all day and eat potato chips. We were made to move and that's what we've got to do. I mean, it's one of those things that, you know, I really believe that I've heard Joe Decina say that a lot, you know, it's one of those things I'm a noon ambassador. So it's the move, move, you know, and, and all that. And it's, it makes sense. We were not made to sit still, sit still. We're made to move. And I mean, I'm a hyperactive person even anyway, even when I'm sitting still, I'm, I'm, I'm moving. It drives my wife nuts, but I never stop moving. But now that I'm even more active, it's even worse. Like I'm constantly like, if we're watching TV, I'll be up like behind her, like walking in place or moving around or whatever. Cause I just sitting for a long time, my legs start to get, you know, they, they don't like it. They, they want to get up and move. So, and I teach and when I teach, I face, you know, and I'll get, what's funny is depending on how long the class is, I can get like 10,000 steps in an eight hour class because I'll pace back and forth and talk while I talk. So awesome. And then you can check that off the do it at night. Yep. And then I only have a thousand left at night because, because a lot happens like today. I spent what, three hours, three and a half hours teaching a class and six hours driving. So it's like, you know, and that's why when I got home, I'm like, I need to run. I've been sitting for three hours driving home. I need to go run, you know, right. and get my legs moving again. So, yeah. Yeah. Changes that's your mindset. And that's really it. Change your mindset. It changes everything. It absolutely. And I find that, you know, we can have so many stresses from the world and from being parents and just, you know, in general, if I can get out there and go for a run or exercise, it is so mind clearing for me. Yeah. Um, and the stress is just, you know, I see so many people walking around, especially this day and time with all that's going on in our world. And it seems like they are just so wound tight and they're stressed and they're, I just want to say, just get out and go walk for 30 minutes. It's all mm -hmm. you got. Just, but a lot of them instead come home and they scroll on their phone or they watch Netflix and they sit and they eat crap food wake up the next morning, go to work, get stressed again. And they just repeat the cycle. And then they wonder, gosh, why do I have high blood pressure? Why have I gained weight? You know, like during COVID, so many people were talking about the COVID 20, all the weight they gained during COVID. And I thought this is the perfect time. So many people are home from work. You have no excuse not to work out. You know, if gyms are closed, you go out in your yard. You can walk around your house, do body weight exercises. Like there's so do something. I think it was Beachbody had a thing for a while where because of COVID, they were like basically letting people have videos for free. You can oh. log in and look at their videos for free and just do, you know, a beach body workout, you know, or whatever, you know, find a workout that works for you. Right. 
Right. And I tell people, a lot of people say, well, gosh, I can't do everything that you do. And I'm like, well, you, you find something that works for you. You know, you don't have to climb ropes and walls, <laughs> like as far as, but do something that works for just move. And that's it. And that's what I tell a lot of people because they look at things and I tell people, don't compare yourself to me. I mean, compare yourself to yourself. And that was the hardest part for me a long time. I'm like, I want to be like that guy. And then after a while, I'm like, no, I just want to be better than this guy was yesterday. You know, right. and that's what I started looking at. And once I started looking at that, it really changed my mindset. I've stopped comparing myself to everyone around me. Like, I'm never going to be as skinny as him. Well, honestly, as skinny as him, I would look kind of weird. So it, it probably wouldn't work for me anyway. I don't have that body type. I just need to look at myself and say, this is what I need best for me, you know? And you see a lot of that where people like, you know, a lot of my friends will look at someone, well, I'll never be as skinny as them. It's like, honestly, looking at you and looking at them, you'd look kind of weird that skinny, you know, you're actually built more as a muscular type person. And for what you do, you want more muscles than, than, you know, skinny and, you know, all that stuff. And that's where a lot of people just don't see it. They're so stuck on image and optics and everything else and it's like yes but the optics for them is not the same as the optics for you so do what works for you you know and that's the hardest part and that's a great point mike because for the longest time you know being a female and i'm sure it's the same for men i would see a woman in a magazine and think i want to look like her i want her abs i want you know and thought why can't i look that way and my husband used to tell me all the time he's like you don't have that dna you have dna to have strong legs muscular legs and arms you don't have a DNA to have a six pack. Do I have abs? Yes, but I don't have that rippled six pack, no matter what I do. And it took me the longest time to finally let that sink in and say, you know, I can be happy with, you know, I'm exercising, I'm drinking lots of water, I'm eating healthy, um, I am healthy. I will be happy with what I've been given, even if I don't have rippled abs. It's not in my. And I think a lot of it too is a lot of people look at those people in magazines, men and women, and they look at them and they say, look how skinny they are, look how, and I'm like, yeah, but in all reality, they're a lot healthy, you know, you know, that's, that's the wrong, you know, skinny, they're not healthy, and then they look at, you know, women that, you know, work out and all that, and they're like, oh, they're, I'm like, no, they're healthy, you know, they're healthy, that's what healthy looks like, you know, when you're as skinny as some of the, like, the supermodels and stuff, it's like, I look at them, like, someone please feed them, you know, but, you look at athletes and they have a little bit more to them, but it's healthy because they have, you know, they eat correctly, they work out, they do all that. And then that's the healthy that people should be looking at. Yes. Yeah. I have to agree. That changed, you know, years ago, I wanted to lose weight to be skinny. And now I'm like, you know what? Forget skinny. I want to have muscle and strength. If I've got to protect myself or my kids or, you know, if this world goes to pieces, I want to know I can survive and have that strength and not, you know, shrivel away like these supermodels. <laughs> yeah. And it's one of those things. I mean, as a parent, you want to also give that, you know, you want to try and, you know, give that message to your kids too. If you're constantly you know, dieting and trying to be skinny and everything else, you know, it, it makes a cycle that our kids watch what we do. And if I'm constantly dieting, but not working out and my kids watching me going, oh, that's what you're supposed to do. Rather than seeing me work out and run and lift weights and get healthy. And then he's like, oh, that's what I should be doing. Not trying to go to be skinny as can be. And we, we've got to break that cycle that, you know, believing that you have to be that itty bitty skinny, you know, person. Right. And skinny doesn't always equal healthy either. Yeah. And just like a bigger person doesn't always equal unhealth. No. I always tell, um, of course, having two teenage girls, I just set a good example for them with exercise and, you know, body pump. But I tell them just because someone is skinny doesn't mean they're healthy. If you're eating right, exercising, getting your water, you're going to be the size you're created to be. No. Yeah. And that is so true. And it's hard to get. And I mean, it's hard because I mean, I have, I, I only have one daughter. I'm out of the four. It's three boys and one girl. Um, oh. But the girl's the one you would not mess with because she will whoop you in a second. And she's oh, the smallest. She's tiny. But, um, but that was the hardest part with her with growing up is just the attitude of seeing her where it's like, you are perfect the way you are. Stop trying to get 
so skinny. It's unhealthy and trying to get that, that mindset into her that, you know, you don't have to be luckily now she's with her, her husband's actually great. Um, and he's, you know, he thinks a lot like me and he's helping her understand she doesn't have to be, you know, a size zero, you know, she needs to be healthy. Right. So that's good. You know, because the guy she was with before that was one of those that everything she should be a size zero. And I really wanted to bury him in the backyard. Um, but you know, because I'm like, this is the wrong idea you're giving her. So, but, right. um, and she was, she was special anyway. She was one of those ones that total girly girl, but when she played baseball, if you put catcher's gear on her, the girl would wallow in the mud. But other than that, she was total girly girl. And you wouldn't believe when like, the, the, it was two opposites. The second you put catcher's gear on her, she completely changed. It was so weird, but I but, love yeah. it. And it was hard to get her to get that understanding of you know you don't have to be a size zero. You just have to be healthy and be you. You know, and that was hard. So luckily, like I said, it seems like she's getting there now. But you know, she's twenty four. You know, so hopefully that stays in her head. But right, you know. yeah. Our yeah. society doesn't really help with trying to get him to believe that, though. So, no, it doesn't. Both of my girls, in fact, they, um, the oldest was on our wrestling team last year. She came in fourth in the state. Nice. And her younger sister, they have recruited her and talking her into doing wrestling this year. So they just came home from wrestling practice right before I got on the phone with you. Um, but I love it because they can be such girly girls cheer bow all that but when it comes to wrestling they're the only two girls against all these boys they practice with and they just go for it or when they do they don't get dirty and I love that that you can have the best of both you know like the feminine girly girl but then also one that's going to be like look I'm tough as nails too you know <laughs> Well, and I think that's the hard part to, to get to, through to them, too, because people don't think about that. You know, when they think of someone who works out, bodybuilder, stuff like that, you know, anyone who lifts weight, they don't think girly girl. And it's like, you can be both. You would be surprised how many girls I know, you know, women I know that lift and do everything else are the strongest people I know, but can also be the most girly girl you've ever seen in your life. You can be both. It's not one or the other, you know. I mean, and that's hard to get, you know, girls to understand because they have that belief that everyone has. If you lift weights, you're going to get huge. No, not if you do it right. Right. You know? Right. You can if you want to. I mean, that's that's a whole nother type of lifting weights. You can get huge if you want to, but they're, lifting weights is healthy, you know, and it helps you get strong and helps you lose weight and will actually make you help you lose weight. And a lot of people don't get that. They're like, oh, I don't want to be big like that. It's like, no, that's not big. That's healthy. Right. And I women they will do the elliptical they will run they will do all this cardio but then they want to know how to lean I say just lift weights I'm like oh I don't think I need to lift weights I don't you know that's where is that yeah it's like listen to any coach ask any coach all the time because that was my thing when I was running a lot and I had a coach for a bit and she kept telling me she's like lift weights she's like you're a strong guy you know but the one thing that you stopped doing when you decided to start losing weight, you stopped lifting and just started running daily, constantly. And like, but you're not lifting. And then all of a sudden I like went to do a pull-up and I'm like, oh yeah, I haven't been lifting. I know that now, you know? And then that's when I started lifting and I did start to gain weight and I'm like, uh, but my pants still were too big. And I'm like, okay, so I'm leaning out and getting heavier, but I'm not getting fatter, you know? And that's what a lot of people don't, they look at those numbers on the scale. And the numbers on the scale, it's not those. And I keep trying to tell everyone that go to, you know, get a tape and measure, measure your arms, measure your waist. And you'll notice all of a sudden you're like, I haven't lost a pound. I'm like, but you've lost three inches in your waist because muscle right. weighs more than fat. And as you build the muscle and the fat goes away, you will actually gain weight sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And muscle is just so condensed, solid, whereas fat takes up this much room on you, muscle's going to take up this much room. So, and those are, those are a lot of things that, you know, it's hard to get people to not believe all these crazy things they believe their entire lives that it's like, no, that's actually not how it works. You know, go to a coach, go to someone, you know, I know multiple really good coaches that have, you know, explained to me how this all works. And I'm like, oh, that's not anything what I believed before, you know, right. 
because that's what I wasn't, I wasn't taught that in high school. I was taught, you know, if you want to get big, you lift weights. You know, if you want to lose weight, you do cardio. You didn't do them both. And when they're like, no, you do both. You need to lift the weights to help, you know, burn, you know, the fat and build the muscle. And I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't learn that. Right, right. For the other myth that I hear from so many people are no carbs, no carbs for me. And I'm like, carbs are good for you. No, you don't need to go out there and eat, you know, Krispy Kreme donuts all the time. Yeah. But carbs, carbs, and so many people try to cut those out. And I'm thinking, you need those. So, carbs yeah. are your energy. Right, right. You know, yeah. that's what they always say. Before a big race, you should carb up. It's like, usually I'll have a huge, like, you know, pasta meal the night before a race. You know, now anyway, it used to be, you know, a steak and whiskey but that was why it was probably 290 pounds oh. but <laughs> now before a race the night before i'll have like you know big my my wife will make a huge thing of spaghetti and i'll eat like way more than i normally would because i'm like i know i need these carbs for the morning especially if i'm doing like you know when i did the the ultra in dallas and stuff like that it's like i know i need these carbs so burn off yeah yeah so. all right well we're don likes to keep it close to an hour we're getting we're getting up there so is there anything you want to tell the listeners in closing? I mean, it's been amazing talking to you and, and, you know, it's good talking to someone who has kind of some of the same experience I've had through life, you know, with the kids and everything else. And, but what, what advice would you give to listeners who are trying to get into this or fighting, you know, with trying to do this with kids? My advice would be, is just live life. I see so many people now that are existing and they're not living. And I did that for years. And it's just, you know, I feel like I missed out on so much because I was just trying every day, just struggling to get through the day. Whereas now I just, I'm 44, but I feel like I'm 26. You know, it's all a mindset. Be grateful every day for what you have, what your body can do, and just live life to the fullest because there's so much out there. You know, don't be defined by age, don't be defined by, Oh, well, I can't run a mile. Well, you can't, but you can walk half a mile. Then you can walk, you know, three quarters of a mile, but just live life to the fullest with a grateful heart. It is. And and yeah. And we all start somewhere. You know, it's like one of the things people look at me now where, you know, you know, I ran like this last week and I did a half marathon just because, (laughs) but when I started, I was a 17 minute pace was amazing for me. And then I remember the first time I hit like four miles in an hour and I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. And all of a sudden it was five miles. And then I did six miles in an hour. Now it's like, if I'm not running a 10 minute pace, I'm mad at myself. And I'm like, two years ago, I would be happy with a 15 minute pace. And now to me, that's like, okay, what's wrong with me? Why, why can't, you know, why am I all the way up at 15 minutes? You know, and we all start somewhere. We all start wherever it's not, you know, and that's one thing we got to remember. We all started somewhere. Just keep looking forward, keep moving ahead. And it's, you know, a good friend of mine always says, always forward. Always forward. And once you, you know, set those goals for yourself, reach them, and then you can more and just keep working. Be better today than you were yesterday. Yep. And your only things I tell myself is I'm only in competition with myself. You know, it's, it's hard when I get up to a start line and I look around at the females around me and you think, gosh, she looks really fast. Oh, wow. Look at her muscles, you know. But then I have to tell myself, Wendy, you're only in competition with yourself. You know, just do better race than you did last race. So, yeah. That's all you need to do. Perfect. Well, it's been nice meeting you. Um, Hopefully someday I'll get on into a race on the East Coast where I can meet you in person. But that's the fun part is there's been a couple of times I've done interviews with people then all of a sudden ran into them in a race. And I'm like, hey, we've talked before. So. Um, hopefully I'll get over there. Um, I want to do more on the East coast and that's one of my, my hopes, not next year, but the year after I want to start looking at, you know, doing those. My main goal is that eventually I want to run a, a race, either it's a 5k Spartan, whatever in every state. Oh, that would be pretty awesome. So, and I've got, I've got a pretty good base so far. It's just, I, I got to start, I need to hit the East coast. So, cause I haven't done anything over there. Yeah, well, we'd love to have you over on the East Coast. <laughs> right on. All right. I hope to see you soon. And it was nice talking to you. And I will, yeah, we'll hopefully talk again soon. Okay. Sounds great, Mike. Right. Thanks for listening to the Beast Net podcast. If you haven't done it yet, 
find us on Facebook. Like and share the podcast. Give us a review on iTunes or Spotify. All these things will help to expand the show in the future. Don't forget to subscribe and let us know what you think and what you'd like to hear. Yeah.